Hey guys, what is up? Okay, so today I'm going to share with you guys on how Joni and I stay warm in the winter in our RV. These are some great tips that I've developed and I am very confident that you haven't seen most of these before. So we're gonna get into that right now. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. I know, I know, you don't have to worry about staying warm in the winter because, well, like us, a lot of you go down south for the winter. But you know, no matter where you are when you're traveling, you're going to run into cold temperatures at times that, you know, it doesn't matter how well you plan or whatever, you just can't fool Mother Nature sometimes. So the things that I've developed and made for our coach to keep us warm, you're just gonna love some of these ideas. So the first thing we need to do is go to Home Depot. So let's go. Okay, so here we are in Home Depot and the first place we're gonna go to is in the plumbing department. And you can see right here, this is where they carry the plumbing uh, foam covering to insulate pipe okay this is what you would normally use in a house or whatever I'm gonna go ahead and get half inch some half inch pieces and I'm gonna get some three-quarter inch pieces and depending on the coach that you have you may want to go with one inch also while you're right here getting this foam insulation tubes make sure you get a couple of rolls of foil tape because you're gonna need that too Okay, so now we're still in Home Depot and we went over into the building supplies and we're over here in the insulation area. And you can see how they sell these big sheets of blue insulation board. Now this blue insulation board is a half inch thick. We're gonna buy three sheets of this. You'll notice that these boards have a dull side and a foil reflective side. You can put either side facing the airspace, but if you want a little bit more insulation, put the reflective side towards the outside, towards the airspace. Okay, right down from where we saw the insulation board, you're gonna see these rolls of R19, and it says faced. What faced means is it has paper backing. We're gonna go ahead and buy one roll of R19 faced, but we're gonna end up removing this paper backing to use it in the coach. Now a little bit further down from the insulation boards and the R19 fiberglass insulation, we also have this reflective material. Uh, some people call it Reflectix, but you can see it's a very thin type of material. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this, but I know a lot of you or a lot of other RVers do use this. They'll put it in their windshield or on the side of their windows or whatever. Uh, I don't like personally living in a cave, but if you want to use it, you can get that in the insulation area in Home Depot also. So we just got back from Home Depot and I bought three of those foam insulation boards, several tubes of that plumbing insulation, and two rolls of the uh, foil tape. Now. The projects that I'm going to show you, I've already done these. I did these four years ago, and we have been implementing these projects and these DIY upgrades to help us keep warm years ago, okay? But we're going to go back to each section. I'm going to share with you what I did and how I did it. Since we're already outside, let's go over here on the driver's side under the slide, and I'll show you the first tip. So here we are on the driver's side, and this is where our big slide is. It's 16 feet, and as you all know, uh, those of you who have a slide like this, up underneath the slide, where it comes out, you have your seal right there. But you know, and have probably experienced, boy, when it gets cold, and especially when it's windy, that wind will whistle through these uh, slide seals, and you'll get a big draft up underneath inside the coach. I mean, you can literally sometimes feel the wind go in there. So the first thing I did is I took these foam pieces and I 
I take them and I tuck them up inside that slide. And I do that all the way down. So when we arrive somewhere, it is automatic what I do. Whether it's warm in the summer or cold in the winter, I pop these in. And I do that for two reasons. Number one, it seals the heat in the summer and cold in the winter and any drafts coming in there. And it keeps dirt from accumulating up in here. Now the second thing I did is I made these insulation boards right here. Now, when you open up the slides, you can see that this is a whole big open area here. And we have a rack and pinion uh, slide system. You can see that right up underneath here. So in the summertime, people driving up and down dusty roads and all that type of stuff, dust gets all inside this area into my mechanisms for my pin rack and pinion. So in addition to that, in the winter time, you get a lot of draft and wind that blows up inside here and that makes the floor even colder. So what I did is I took a piece of cardboard, went dumpster diving, and I cut this shape out and I took two of those pieces of foam board, wrapped them all up in foil, and then I just take them and I just pop that in there and then I make a separate piece and that goes in the bottom. So now this whole area cannot get dust in it and it blocks the draft. And this right here, these two things make a huge difference. Let me show you what I did to the other side. You can see this is the other slide mechanism, but the same thing. I put it up in there, I hit it and put that block in there and Voila, you're done. So every time I set up, these go in automatically. So now we're on the, on the little slide on the passenger side, and you can see I've done the same thing here, okay? Yes, it has seals, but this gives a little bit added protection. And then when we get ready to go, I just pull these out and slip them into the bay. Okay, so here we are at the wet bay. And this is always a concern to people about how to keep their water from freezing and all that type of thing. We do not have heated bays. And you know how fussy I am about water, right? I mean, I got it triple filtered and softened and I don't want to have any uh, freezing issues either. So what I did with that, with that board is I insulated every single bay door. That's the first thing I did. Now, I could have used a little bit of uh, adhesive on the door and then press it in there but I decided not to do that because I was afraid that well maybe you know if we ever sell this coach or when we do sell this coach uh, the the new owner may not want this in here and he'll peel it off and then you're gonna have all those splotches there of uh, adhesive so I was just very careful to cut this very tight and so it snaps up in there and it stays put. Now, I actually did some tests before and after I put these boards in. I used my infrared uh, thermometer tester and inside the bays was 43 degrees after I put in this board. Before the board, it was in the 20s. So this really, really helped insulate and keep the inside underneath the, in the basement, in all the bays, a lot warmer. So that's the first thing I did. <clears throat> the second thing I did is you can see our wet bay is a plastic tub of sorts. It's all plastic down here on the bottom, up on the sides, and it goes all the way back up in there. But this plastic here, I mean, even though it's thick, when it gets cold, you know, this stuff can really magnify the, the cold. So what I did is I insulated the whole outside of this tub. I used the insulation board and I did on the outside of, the, of this tub, I put adhesive, I put the uh, blue board up there, I made it, I kind of boxed it all in up underneath. So after I had it cut out, adhered to the bottom, taped it, and put the bolts, 
Then I bought some 3M rubberized material, three cans, and I went underneath, laid on my back, and I totally rubberized that whole outside shell. Man, what a difference that has made. Now, I'm not going to crawl under there right now and show this to you because I've already done a video on this, okay? Set your wet bay up right and be done with it. So if you want to see the details about that, you can just go there. I also went in here and I insulated all of the piping. Can you see that? This is where I first started putting this R19. I actually took this cover off right here. I completely removed this and I put R19 all up inside here. All the way back, all up inside, I don't know if you can, yeah, yeah, there you go, you can see that. You see all that? I insulated all the, the entire walls and you see this here? I did all of the pipes too with the insulation, that foam tubing. So this wet bay is totally insulated. Now to keep it warm, to give it a little bit more uh, protection, I use this lamp right here. This lamp, I just keep clamped up there. I run the extension cord down through the hole here where my water hoses and stuff like that comes. And I run this to an electrical outlet with an extension cord. And it has a 100 watt bulb in it. You can get these at Home Depot. I clamp it up in there and it has an on and off switch. And I am not joking, that will keep this bay about 48, 50 degrees when it's 17 degrees out here. Now, how do I know that? Well, on top of my water filter, I have strapped, this is my Bluetooth sensor here. It comes with a monitor and two sensors. I keep one of these sensors in the refrigerator. So it gives me an accurate reading just by looking at the monitor, what's inside the refrigerator but it also tells me what the temperature is in here too. And I just keep this right there. So I can literally monitor the temperature that's inside the wet bay at all times. So as a quick review, insulated the doors, insulated the wet bay box, used R19 all the way up and through and behind here. I used the foam and, and foil tape on all the plumbing and then use a light. We've been in cold temperatures since then and I never have to worry about this. Now if it's getting down into the you know really cold temps you know low 20s uh, in the teens um, I, first of all I will not hook up my water. Uh, all the filters on the uh, on the spigot come off they go in the bay my hoses they because i don't want them to freeze get hard and crack them right so you don't hook up water when it gets that cold you use your fresh water in your tank but we have never had a problem keeping our water tanks see my water tanks and everything are all up here my black tanks my water tanks they're all up here don't have to worry anything about that plumbing or those tanks freezing it's plenty warm okay so now we're inside the coach I want to show you one of the largest areas where cold draft would come in and it's right here at the front door right here now i know a lot of diesel pushers have their house batteries in the back in another bay but most gas coaches have their batteries underneath the steps okay and that whole area where your batteries are, it's all open right down to the ground. And I cannot tell you how much cold air at nighttime will come in through here. I, I needed to fix this problem. So what I did was, is I knew I had to block this whole area. So once again, I went dumpster diving and I got a piece of thick cardboard. Once I had that template, of how that cardboard will fit tight up against the door, I took two pieces of that blue board and I taped them together here and I made a flat piece, okay? Then I took another piece of just one piece of the blue board and this piece fits inside here. Do you see that? So this is this lip right here is where it rests outside here. And then this inner part 
snaps in here and we just push it in like that. So at nighttime when we get ready to go to bed and it's cold, that board goes on just like that. It lifts out easy for an emergency and it snaps in easy. When we're done with it or for the day or what have you, I just pull it out and I slide it right down behind the love seat. I do not keep this in the bays. So I'm telling you, this one little thing right here for the inside of the coach, popping that in at nighttime, that is gonna get rid of a ton of cold air. Now I did have an idea of making it look pretty. I was gonna to go to a fabric store and buy some burgundy fabric or something and spray it with some glue and, and make it look prettier. If you wanna do that, that's fine. I've never gotten around to that. Now continuing inside the coach, we just walked in the door and right here in the front cab area, you have these uh, storage areas, right? We got three doors up here and this is right uh, under the front cap. Now this was another huge area that was allowing a lot of heat. I mean in the summertime we'd open up one of these doors right here and the heat would just pour out. And of course then the air conditioners have to work harder and all that kind of nonsense. Well guess what? It does the same thing in the winter. Lots of cold air up in that area. I'm just going to show you what I did here in the center um, storage bin. Uh, but I've done it to all three of them. And to demonstrate to you uh, for this video, I went ahead and emptied everything out of here. And what I did, these panels right here, they come out. They're just held by screws, okay? So when you drop this panel, this whole area, I mean, look how far back this goes. Can you see that? It goes way back there and it's all empty. The only thing that's back there is maybe a few wires. But this whole cavity was totally empty. And I took off this one and this one. And you can see even up in there. Can you see all that insulation up there? This whole entire area I packed with that R19. And this, again, has made a huge difference. You just put that in there, put the panels back up, screw it back up. Do that on all three of these storage bays and that whole front cap now is insulated for heat and for the winter. So right below these storage bays, if you go right down here on the floor, you'll see that we have these heater vents right here. See that? And underneath those heaters, there's a little storage compartment right up underneath here. There's nothing, there's no vents underneath there. It's just a void area just to store stuff. But that's another place where a draft will come through. It comes right through the firewall from the engine bay. And so what Joni does is she'll roll up a towel and she'll just take this and tuck that towel in there and block that draft that comes through there. Now, over here on the driver's side, where the other side of the firewall is, I tried to come up with a way uh, to block that area, but you know what? As it turned out, there's not much draft there. There's a lot of electronics in there, and I guess maybe the wall is the, the firewall is thicker, or I have no idea, but it's not cold over here. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen sink area, and below the kitchen sink, of course, you have your two cabinets, right? And when we first got this coach, we realized we opened up these doors and I mean in the summertime, the heat would just pour out of these cabinets. And again, it's just making our uh, air conditioner work hard and all that. And then in our first winter, we felt this cold, this, this I mean, it was literally drafty in there. And I'm like, okay, well, we gotta do something about that. Right behind the kitchen sink is where we have our outside TV. So you have just that little thin door that uh, closes over the TV and there was and of course you've got a lot of plumbing back there. You have a lot of wiring harnesses and plumbing to feed the water up here and your drain hoses and all that and I'm like okay we need to do something about this. So let me show you what we did under the sink. What I did is I took this board off right here. I'm not gonna I don't need to show you that but I had completely exposed everything behind here. 
And I took this R19, again, took the paper backing off, and I put R19 all the way through here, all up underneath the sink, and all the way down into here, and also went around all of the plumbing in there. Because like I said, there are several lines. If you were to take this floor out right here in your coach, man, there is a bunch of stuff underneath here. And so I insulated all that to keep the heat and the draft, the cold draft out in the winter. Now, if you continue to the right over here, I pulled all these drawers out, okay? And I removed them by these little latches. In case you don't know how this works, there's one of these little latches right here on either side of the drawer. What you do is you simultaneously lift up on one side push down on the other and these drawers will come out. Once I had all these drawers removed, I took that R19 insulation, reached in there and I completely insulated the back wall right up here to the stove. So this whole back wall here is all insulated. Another thing we do is we have three vents. We have one over the kitchen, one in the half bath and one in the full bath. So you just take these uh, vent pillows. They have uh, insulation foil on one side, pillow on the other, and you just push them up in there. I'm gonna go back to these pillows in a minute. Okay, so here we are in my favorite room of the coach, the bedroom. And I'm sure your bed lifts up just like this, just like ours does, right? But let me show you what I found out when I was getting our coach ready to go full time. If you take the mattress and you pull it out, you have this uh, plywood um, bed area here, and there's where the hinge is. You see that? That's where it lifts up and down. But the first few weeks when we were sleeping in here, man, our, we, it was so cold up against the wall right here. And I was like, man, where is all that cold draft coming from? So I took this floor all the way off. And you know what's underneath there? Nothing. Just some uh, electrical lines, a couple of plumbing lines, and that was it. It basically, this whole area here, uh, which is about three feet wide and about six, seven feet long, was a totally void area, an empty cavity. And I'm like, well, no wonder. But that area was so deep, I could easily put in two layers of R19. I also took the paper off. And this here, draft is gone. Okay, so we've talked about insulating and all that type of thing. Now, let me explain how we stay warm. We use two type of heaters, and they're both ceramic. The first one we use is this floor model. We've had this floor model for a long time. We even had this at the house. Uh, they don't make this anymore, uh, but I do have a good suggestion for you. One, it, it's not only better than this one, but it's cheaper and it's lighter. This one here is pretty beefy. I mean, it's, it's pretty heavy, uh, but it works great. Now what we do is we have a 35 foot coach and we put this in the living room and we plug it in and we set it at 70. This thing here, if, if it gets down to say 40, 42, 45, and we're in a park and we have electric, we turn this on, set it at 70, and this will keep the whole coach nice and toasty. If it gets lower than that, if it gets into the 20, you know, the low 30s or the high 20s or whatever, then we will use another smaller ceramic one in the bedroom, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, some of you will have a, especially on the newer coaches, you may have a fireplace in the living area. You know, I've talked to a lot of our friends who have those, and uh, that really works well in the living area. But in the, in the bedroom, not so much. They have to usually put an additional uh, smaller heater back there. Uh, but I've got some other suggestions back there too, and I'll show you what we do. But using a floor heater like this, and the one that I'm gonna suggest to you, uh, they're pet safe. You don't have to worry about pets rubbing up against here. If they fall over, they're going to automatically go off. They'll oscillate. You can adjust the temperature to, you know, whatever you want. 72, 74, 78, 68, doesn't matter. 
And this right here, I mean, if you're in a campground and you're already paying for electric or you have electric, I mean, I just don't see any reason why you would not use an electric floor heater. If you have full hookups, this is the way to go using a floor furnace. Uh, it's so much cheaper than propane and we just store ours right up underneath the table. Easy to store, easy to set up, it's adjustable and it keeps this coach nice and toasty. Now let's go back to the bedroom and I'll show you what we do back there when it really gets cold. We'll use this secondary heater. You can see it's not very big and it's not very heavy and I put additional little stick pads on the bottom so when we put it on the counter, it won't scratch the counter. And we'll just plug that baby in there like that. It has fan where it'll just blow just regular, just air. Then it has heater one with all these settings and then two, which is more accelerated. And it's a little bit hotter putting on those settings. We'll just put that up there like that. And normally we'll put it on one We'll set it off about right there somewhere. It's very quiet. Now this particular ceramic heater, uh, they don't cost much, but we don't have pets. And this one does not have a tip over feature. Now for Joni and I, we don't care. We just plug it right up in here and set it and it's all good. But if you have cats or anything else that jump up here and walk around and that thing tipped over, it will not go off. So when you're using something like this in the bedroom um, or in the living room, you want that tip over sh automatic shut off feature. But for us, uh, this one works just fine. I'm going to, again, I'm going to be suggesting in the links below where I always give you all that stuff. Um, I'm going to give you this one here and the, a great floor model better than ours. It's like I said, it's lighter and cheaper and and uh, much easier to store. So those will be up here. So I want to talk to you about one other option here that some people use and it's called Mr. Heater. It's a propane type of a heater. Now just imagine when you turn on your propane stove in the motorhome, right? You turn it on, you click it, the flames come up on your burner, right? You're burning propane there. Your area, your coach needs to be vented that's why they tell you don't ever turn, use your stove to heat your house because it puts out toxic gases. If you're using that kind of heater, you have to be aware of that too. Uh, you have to have some windows or a couple of windows or a vent or two cracked open um, to be able to use that type of heater because of those fumes and everything that you uh, get from a propane uh, heater. The other thing about Mr. Heater is that they have the small uh, propane bottles that you screw into the heater itself. Now, those of you who have followed me, you know I'm not a big fan of that stuff. I mean, it's just more stuff to buy, more stuff to, to take up room, more weight and all that stuff. But if you are boondocking somewhere and you don't have full hookups to be able to use an electric heater, well, then a propane heater is a good way to go. But we would not use that as our standard go-to type of heater. Okay. Mr. Heater is a good propane heater. Um, it has the tip over feature and all that type of stuff too. Uh, but I only would recommend that if you do not have full hookups or you're boondocking overnight at a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel or something like that. Which brings me to using your propane furnace in the parks. There's been many times, many times where we have been in a park, a full hookup park and it gets cold at night and we've heard our neighbors next door or wherever fire up their propane furnace. And I'm like, why are they using their propane furnace? You got full hookups. Why don't you just plug in a floor furnace? Propane is a whole lot more expensive than electricity. And most campgrounds, when you are staying there, your electric comes with it anyway. But even if you had to pay for electric in addition to your camping fees, Using an electric floor furnace like what we're showing you we do, it's a whole lot more economic to use a floor, an electric floor furnace. But getting back to the propane uh, furnace, uh, maybe I'm missing something. Give me some comments down below and let me know if you use, if you use propane furnace 
in a full hookup park and instead of using a floor electric furnace, I'd like to know why. Uh, just for my own knowledge, uh, but for Martin, I just don't see any sense in all that. But I'd love to hear from you uh, your argument on why you use it and why it would be better. That would be good. That would be good knowledge to know. Now, another thing to uh, keep your coach nice and toasty, uh, and we have done from time to time. Again, when it's really cold. Okay, I'm talking down into the 20s or the teens, right? We have used a heated mattress pad, okay? A heated mattress pad goes under the fitted sheet around the, mat, uh, around the mattress, okay? So about maybe 30 minutes or so before you're getting ready to go to bed, you come in and you turn on the uh, mattress pad and it'll get that bed nice and toasty. So when you slip into those covers, you can start spooning right away, right? <laughs> but you now th this particular heated mattress pad is dual controlled. Uh, and th the one I'm gonna give a link to is awesome because it has long six foot controllers where you can tuck it away and have one for each side. That way if the wife likes it warmer, husband likes it cooler or whatever, you can actually control each side. So that's another way to kind of get the bedroom ready and keep it toasty before you go to bed. Now, one last thing I want to uh, cover here, and this is really important. We've talked about insulating and keeping warm and using heaters and all these types of things. But I'm going to tell you, when it's cold outside and you've got the coach inside nice and toasty, you're going to create condensation on the windows. And I'm going to show you right now how to deal with that. So to deal with condensation, which is going to happen if you keep this coach warm and it's cold outside, you'll see water running down the windows. And especially in our coach, we have found the one that does the most condensating is our cabin windows and our uh, windshield. So what, here's how we deal with this, and this works great. We have up front here, we have two of these dehumidifiers. It has a little tub back here. You, see, you can see here, we even still got some water from the other night still in there. But you can just pull these out, dump it, put it back in, and it works off of an electrical plug right here. It has an on feature and an off feature. As we put one in each corner of the windshield. And the way you hook it up, it has this little plug right here. You just plug it in and you have these little plugs right here. And I'll run both of those to the center of the dashboard. And I run an extension cord from on, on the side of the passenger chair. I run an extension cord up to there and plug them both in there. Once I turn these on, I take the curtains and I pull these around like this. If you have a shade, put the shade down. And what I do is I make a little covering here, okay? Why am I doing that? I'm doing that to prevent, because again, what's causing condensation? Heat on the inside, cold on the outside, that creates that condensation. So by bringing both of the curtains around and keeping this area enclosed, I'm kind of keeping the heat in the coach and away from the glass and that prevents condensation. But what we also do, as you can see right here, is we take two big towels. This is only done in the winter. We roll them up and we push them back in here. So if condensation does drool down here, it'll go into the towels. I do not want that water to run down here and behind the dash and get into all of my electronics that are back there up underneath the dash, okay? So, We'll put two towels there. We'll put two dehumidifiers here. Enclose the front area with our curtains and that takes care of the front area. Again, if it gets really cold and we've got, I mean, we're really got heat blowing through here. We'll put another one of those dehumidifiers in the back, bath, in the back bathroom. So now I wanna get back to the vent. When you're really keeping the coach warm and it's cold outside and you've got, you do not wanna button up your coach. The coach needs to breathe. So you can do one of two things. Those pillows that I showed you that go up into the vent, you can pop those pillows out in a couple of those vents and take the vent and just crack it. 
maybe about that much, okay? One vent in the front, one vent in the back. Or you could take a window now and, and crack a window. Now, I'm not really a big fan on the window thing because usually when it's cold and windy, that wind will whistle through the sides of those windows. But if you crack a vent, you don't get the whistling, you don't get the wind blowing through, but you do allow the coach to breathe, okay? So you can have the heaters going, you can have these dehumidifiers going, but make sure you have at least a couple of vents and maybe even a little bathroom window crack just a little bit to allow fresh air to come into the coach and allow it to breathe. Well, since I'm sitting right here, this is a good place to give you some last closing comments. We just passed our 1 million views on our YouTube channel. And it's all because of you guys. Uh, that's just incredible. So I, again, uh, Joni and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. That would have never, ever happened without you guys. Everything that I've explained here, the heaters and the pillows and the, uh, the dehumidifiers, all the stuff that we've talked about, as always, I'll have links below in the description text. And uh, also, don't forget, we got our Amazon store now. I, can't, I just can't believe I got that done. But uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that it helps you guys and it makes it so much easier. We just go to one place and it's all going to be there. But those of you who do use our links, I want to tell you again from Joni and I, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for using our links to buy all your gear. This, not just the stuff that, that we use here, but any gear. Using our store is a great way to say thank you. And many of you have been using that, uh, our links. So thank you so much. I mean, we're retired like most of you, right? I mean, every little bit helps. So anyway, that's it for now, guys. This is how Joni and I keep our coach warm in the wintertime. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around!